The cellular jail, also known as K with Macron, L with Macron, P with Macron, and Black Water, was a British colonial prison in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The prison was used by the colonial government of India for the purpose of exiling criminals and political prisoners. Many notable independence activists, including Devan Singh Talepani, Yogendra Shukla, Batukeshwar Dutt, Shadan Chandra Chatterjee, Sohan Singh, Vinayak Savrakar, Hare Krishna Konar, Shiv Varma, Allama Fezlaihat Kherabadi, and Sudhanshu Das Gupta were imprisoned here during the struggle for India's independence. Today, the complex serves as a national memorial monument. Although the prison complex itself was constructed between 1896 and 1906, the British authorities in India had been using the Andaman Islands as a prison since the days in the immediate aftermath of the Indian Rebellion of 1857. Shortly after the rebellion was suppressed, captured prisoners were put on trial, with many of them being executed. Others were exiled for life to the Andamans to prevent them from reoffending. 200 rebels were transported to the islands under the custody of the jailer David Barry and Major James Patterson Walker, an Indian medical service, IMS, doctor who had been warden of the prison at Agra. Another 733 from Karachi arrived in April, 1868. In 1863, the Rev. Henry Fisher Corbin, of the Bengal Ecclesiastical Establishment, was also sent out there and he set up the Andamanese home there which was also a repressive institution, albeit disguised as a charitable one. Rev. Corbin was posted in 1866 as vicar to St. Luke's Church, Abbottabad, and later died there and is buried at the Old Christian Cemetery, Abbottabad. More prisoners arrived from India and Burma as the settlement grew. Anyone who belonged to the Mughal royal family, or who had sent a petition to Bahadur Shah Zafar during the rebellion was liable to be deported to the islands. The remote islands were considered to be a suitable place to punish the independence activists. Not only were they isolated from the mainland, the overseas journey, Kala Pani, to the islands also threatened them with loss of caste, resulting in social exclusion. The convicts were also used in chain gangs to construct prisons, buildings and harbour facilities. The construction of the prison started in 1896 and was completed in 1906. The original building was a puce-coloured brick building. The bricks used to build the building were brought from Burma. The building had seven wings, at the centre of which a tower served as the intersection and was used by guards to keep watch on the inmates. This format was based on Jeremy Bentham's idea of the panopticon. The wings radiated from the tower in straight lines, much like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. Each of the seven wings had three stories upon completion. There were no dormitories and a total of 696 cells. Each cell was 4.5 by 2.7 meters in size, with a ventilator located at a height of 3 meters. The name, Cellular jail, derived from the solitary cells, which prevented any prisoner from communicating with any other. Also, the spokes were so designed such that the face of a cell in a spoke saw the back of cells in another spoke. This way, communication between prisoners was impossible. They were all in solitary confinement. The locks of the prison cells were designed in such a way that the inmate would never be able to reach the latch of the lock. The prison guards would lock up the inmates and throw the key of the lock inside the jail. The inmate would try to put his hand out and try to unlock the door but would never be able to do so as his hand would never reach the lock. Conditions faced by prisoners in the cellular jail were frequently abysmal. As noted in a Guardian article, prisoner could face torture, medical tests, forced labour and for many, death. In response to poor conditions, in the cellular jail, including the quality of prison food, numerous prisoners went on hunger strikes, those who did were often force-fed by the prison authorities. Solitary confinement was implemented as the British government of India wanted to ensure that political prisoners and revolutionaries be isolated from one another. The Andaman Island served as the ideal setting for the colonial government to achieve this. 
most prisoners of the cellular jail were independence activists. Mahatma Gandhi and Rabindranath Tagore launched a campaign to shut down the jail, and the colonial government decided to repatriate the political prisoners from the cellular jail from 1937 to 1938. The cellular jail was forced to empty in 1939. Two years later, the Japanese seized the islands, transforming the Penal settlement into a prisoner of war camp, incarcerating the British warders. In 1945 the Andamans would become the first piece of India to be declared independent. The Japanese launched an invasion of the Andaman Islands in March 1942, capturing the cellular jail and all prison personnel. The cellular jail then became home to British prisoners of war, suspected Indian supporters of the British, and later of members of the Indian Independence League, many of whom were tortured and killed there by the Japanese dot. 25, notionally during this period control of the islands was passed to Subhas Chandra Bose, who hoisted the Indian national flag for the first time on the islands, at the Jim Khan ground in Port Blair, appointed Ina General A.D. Lognathan as the governor of the islands, and announced the Azad Hind government was not merely a government in exile, and had freed the territory from British colonial rule. On 7 October 1945 the British resumed control of the islands and prison following the surrender of the islands to Brigadier J. A. Salomons of the 116th Indian Infantry Brigade, a month after the surrender of Japan, at the end of World War II. Another two wings of the jail were demolished after India achieved independence. However, this led to protests from several former prisoners and political leaders who saw it as a way of erasing the tangible evidence of their history. The Govind Ballab Pant Hospital was set up in the premises of the cellular jail in 1963. It is now a 500-bed hospital with about 40 doctors serving the local population. Cellular jail was declared a national memorial by the then Prime Minister of India. Morarzi Desai on 11 February 1979. The centenary of the jail's completion was marked on 10 March 2006. Many former prisoners were celebrated on this occasion by the Government of India. Apart from guided tours, a sound and light show is also run in the evenings narrating and showcasing the trials and tribulations of the inmates. It is available in English and Hindi. Please like and subscribe our channel for more interesting videos.